Well, good morning, and welcome to Morning Gospel Fuel with Mr. G. There's an echo in here. I had to change my rooms into an office space in the conference room. So I'm having a hard time focusing on this uh, thesis paper. And I'm having a bad hair day, but it's Easter. It's Holy Week. So anyway, it is Tuesday, April 12th, Tuesday of Holy Week. And it is the feast day of St. Teresa of the Andes. Um, the Andes is Los, is Los Andes, which is in Chile. Uh, she was around in the night. She was born in 1900, and she died in 1920. Uh, she and St. Teresa of the Andes, she was a professed Carmelite religious sister uh, from Chile. And her time was cut short in the convent due to contracting a an aggressive disease that killed her at only 19 years old. But she is Chile's first saint, and she is the fifth saint of the order that has the name Teresa. So there we go. That is St. Teresa of the Andes is the patron saint of Los Andes and for those fighting diseases and illnesses. Today's gospel is from John chapter 13, verses 21 through 33 and 36 through 38. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. When he had said this, Jesus was deeply troubled and testified, Amen, amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another at a loss as to whom he meant. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter nodded to him to find out whom he meant. He leaned back again. He, he leaned back against Jesus' chest and said to him, Master, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I hand the morsel after I have dipped it. So he dipped the morsel and took it and handed it to Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot. After he took the morsel, Satan entered him. So Jesus said to him, What are you going to do? Do quickly. Now, none of those reclining at table realized why he said this to him. Some thought that since Judas kept the money bag, Jesus had told him, buy what we need for the feast, or to give something to the poor. So he took the morsel and left it once, and it was night. When he had left, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. You will look for me, and as I told the Jews, where I go you cannot come. So now I say it to you. Simon Peter said to him, Master, where are you going? Jesus answered him, Where I am going you cannot follow me now, though you will follow later. Peter said to him, Master, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Amen, amen, I say to you, the cock will not crow before you deny me three times. Okay, so we have the, Jesus' life is on the clock. And we have this uh, announcement of Judas' betrayal, which is taking place right before the Last Supper or during Holy Thursday night. And we have the washing of the feet, and then we have the announcement of Judas's betrayal as written by John, the apostle, the beloved one mentioned in today's gospel, who is leaning on the chest of Jesus, asking Jesus who it, who it is that's going to deny him. So John is the beloved, and John is the writer of this gospel. Um, so you can see that even based upon yesterday's gospel, that John doesn't think too highly of Judas. Um, how could he? Um, but we see through this gospel today two moments of just our human weakness and our frailties and how much we need to rely on, on God and our faith, even amongst our brokenness and our, and our natural inclination to do wrong to do evil and to be so easily tempted um, for wrong. Because um, it does take discipline uh, to, to do good. Um, 
which is, is, is just in, built in our human nature due to the fall. And so it shouldn't surprise us whenever we have like evil thoughts or evil actions or evil words, but the key is we must recognize it and learn self-discipline and learn to manage and become a master of our emotions um, so that they don't get the best of us. Um, and as we see, it did not work for Judas. Um, he let his human weakness uh, overpower him. Uh, and as it says here in John's Gospel, that Satan entered him after he took the morsel uh, when he had left uh, with the money bag. And you see how much greed took over Judas' life and made him lose sight of the main goal which should be to be in union with Christ and then to be in good relationship with Christ. And, and Judas broke that. And then later on, as we, as we have Peter's denial predicted, Jesus and Peter are talking, and Jesus tells Peter that he's going to deny him three times. And the difference here between, because, you know, it, it has to be interesting. Um, Peter just tells Jesus that I will lay down my life for you. And then Jesus replies, no. Nah, you will lay down. He's like, will you lay down your life for me? You will deny me three times before the cock crows. Three before the cock crows. <clears throat> and so, uh, you see, but then Peter asks for forgiveness after he does deny him. Judas does not. So whenever we fall, the challenge today is how do we react? Do we react like Judas and just grow deeper in despair? Or do we react like Peter and seek forgiveness? This way we can become reunited with Christ and our spiritual lives can be transcended once again. So have a great day. God bless. Keep it real. In the Father, Son, and Spirit, amen.